So we all know the story of Metal Gear is one of anti-nuclear weapons in world peace. Hell, it's in every mainline game and it's mentioned constantly. But did you know that Metal Gear actually has a different story it wants to tell? That it does so throughout all the games that most people end up missing. That story is one of a man integral to the plot. No, I'm not talking about Zero. I'm talking about Big Boss. And how the story really wants you to realize that Big Boss is literally a nobody. He's nobody special and anybody in his shoes would have done the exact same things that he did. Now, to deconstruct Big Boss as a character, we need to go back to Metal Gear Solid 3. Back to when he was simply known as John. Very well, John. Plain name. But I won't forget it. Now, John's mission was to destroy the Shagohod and kill his mentor, the boss. However, throughout his mission, we repeatedly see him get his ass kicked constantly. Every single time he fights anybody hand to hand, he usually loses, which again reinforces that despite all of his training, despite the fact that he served in the Korean War, and despite the fact that he is a Green Beret taught by the only other person who knows CQC, he's still a complete nobody in the eyes of the world. After Metal Gear Solid 3, he disappears from the limelight for a while, and one of his sons, Dave, takes the reins. This is where it gets interesting, because Dave has the recessive genes of Big Boss. That's right, he does all this crazy mumbo-jumbo and defeats Liquid, who is the superior clone, despite the fact that he is the inferior one. He kills Big Boss, not once, but twice. When Big Boss was fighting at his fullest both times, he destroys multiple Metal Gears, more than Big Boss ever did, and not to mention, he repeats all of this, even when he's old and decrepit, and the Metal Gears he fights are way more advanced than a damn tank who needs a runway to go down it so it can launch a nuke. Now, to reinforce this idea even further, let's look at someone who's not even related to Big Boss. He's not a clone of him in any way. That's right. We're going to talk about Raiden. Raiden is without a doubt the antithesis to Big Boss's excellence. Raiden was a child soldier, yes, but he never saw a full day of combat during his time in the U.S. Army. He ran VR mission after VR mission, talking about how he ran them over 200 times and how he knows Shadow Moses inside and out. His first real mission He's called Snake, which isn't just to fool the player like a haha funny Kojima does it again kind of way, but it's to parallel him with Big Boss, where in Big Boss's first mission, he was also given the code name Snake. Hell, in Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake is even wearing a Raiden mask and multiple times disguises himself as someone who looks like Raiden to parallel themselves between the two. And yes, you could say that it's a funny, haha, got a moment from Kojima, but I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's to parallel the fact that Raiden and Big Boss are very similar to each other. And despite it being his first real mission, Raiden is capable of these amazing feats. Let's not even forget the part where he canonically takes out 30 Metal Gear Solid Raids defending Arsenal gear by himself with just a stinger missile. That is something not even Big Boss could do. He had to get the help of Kaz and MSF to take down Zeke, which is way less advanced than both Rex and Ray ever were. But to further my point, there is another man in the series who again in no way is even related to Big Boss. He has no combat experience at all. That's right, baby. We're talking about Venom Snake. Now, Venom is interesting because he's a medic. That's all he is. He's never seen any actual combat during his time in MSF and knows only how to do medicine and help people. Yet, through nine years of hypnosis, this dude actually thinks he's the real big boss. Now go. Let the legend come back to life. And it works. He flawlessly fools everybody from MSF soldiers to Huey to Volgan to Skullface. The only people who recognize him are the damn AI pod and Volgan, but only at the very end when he pays attention to Venom Snake's green eyes instead of John's blue eyes. I don't like those blue eyes of his. 
And all this hypnosis works so well, in fact, that he even has fake memories of how much he cares for everyone in Mother Base and how he even cares about his men in Paz way more than the real big boss ever did. And despite having no combat training, he's immediately great at it and he's on Big Boss's level. This dude didn't even have CQC training, nor did he invent it with the greatest soldier in the world, yet immediately gets it and knows how to do it on the level of the same dude who did. Not only that, but he fights a Metal Gear that is infinitely more advanced than anything Big Boss ever fought. And while you could argue that, yes, he also has help from Diamond Dogs, like Big Boss had with Zeke and MSF, you can also do it completely solo, which further cements that his abilities have completely surpassed Big Boss. Now... I could also talk about how Skullface did help Big Boss put weapons down on the field of Metal Gear Solid 3 to help him in his mission, where Solid Snake, Raiden, and Venom Snake didn't have that at all. But I think that's kind of a dumb retcon, but it is important to talk about because it cements my idea that Big Boss is a literal nobody in the eyes of the world. He didn't do anything special, and he had like 20 different people helping him with every single minuscule thing he did. I've long been the other side of your coin. 1964, Soviet territory. Box's first mission. Any mess you made, I was there to clean. There's one more person who surpassed Big Boss. One person who has been by everyone's side from Metal Gear 1, the very first game, all the way to Metal Gear Solid 4 and Metal Gear Solid 5, the final games in the series. That's right. It's you the player you have been there you've experienced everything big boss has since the start of his journey you've experienced people like solid snake and ryan surpassing him you experienced making venom into the legend he was metal gear solid 5's true ending even tells you how you are big boss together with him you have to you've written your own history you're your own man i'm big boss and you are too. It's a nod at both Venom and the player himself. Everything Big Boss did, whether you got caught, whether you did perfect stealth, whether you messed around with the damn crocodile hat, is everything Big Boss canonically did in the series. Yes, even you have surpassed Big Boss in doing everything he did, but better. Now, this isn't really to disparage Big Boss or his legacy, or even his character, but it's interesting how fans and even the games hold him to this high level of prowess when, in reality, everyone's better than him. If you look at Big Boss's life, he spent a majority of his life in a coma, and I truly think this is something most people miss and want to talk about it because, well, it's interesting. In the grand scheme of the world, Big Boss doesn't do much past Metal Gear Solid 3. His actions don't have an effect on the greater world around him, except for an extremely niche part, which are just soldiers who have lost their way and are trying to find a way in the world again. And we see how great he is, but Metal Gear Solid 2's ending really cements that no matter what the characters do, they're really just minor actions towards the world as it continues to spin. Hell, Ryan just killed the President of the United States who crashed Arsenal Gear into New York and everyone's just walking and going by like usual you might see the effect they have on the world you might see solid snake stopping the patriots and becoming a hero but nobody else sees that nobody else across the world would even see snake's great fight with ocelot and even know why these two men are fighting because nobody knows them except for you now we might see solid snake as a hero or big boss and venom as villains but in reality they're just nobodies who don't matter Perhaps this is left over from Kojima's original secondary views. Nobody is a good guy in a world where people are killed by them. People with lives and families. And I think that was the main point Kojima wanted to get across. And that in these games with the proxy war against the Patriots, everyone's fighting is, well, useless. Nobody in the grand scheme of the world notices any changes and Nobody really cares about the changes, which is very interesting in my opinion. It's the Rorschach situation where we see someone who wants to do the right thing but goes about it wrong, and we latch onto them. Someone who is unflinching to do the right things, even if it means killing everyone in his way, is a lot better in the eyes of humans than someone who just sits idly by while people suffer and lie to each other. 
I think this also, again, ties into Kojima's original plans for both Snake and Otacon, as he wanted to do an MGS2 and MGS4. He literally wanted them to be killed by a firing squad for being terrorists at the end of both games to cement that, yeah, while they might have saved the world, the rest of the world still thinks that they're radical terrorists, and nobody really knows all the heroics that they've done. But hey, at the end of the day, maybe that was Kojima's vision besides the whole nuclear proliferation story. That's just what I've seen playing Metal Gear Solid, and every time I try to bring it up that Big Boss was just a nobody who got lucky, everyone just hounds me and says, no, he's the greatest guy in the world. Like, yeah, you saw how great he was, but nobody else did. At the end of the day, he's got all those medals just because he was in the right place at the right time. But do you guys have any different theories, or do you want to talk about a point I made? Feel free. I'm all ears. I love to hear and read discussions on things like this and various theories and being backed up with evidence within the games themselves. I love this. So yeah, thank you all for watching this video, and I hope to see you next time.